Thanks for staying with us. Now, royalty, a fee that one receives in exchange for allowing another party to use and profit from one's property. That's the definition. Now, royalties are set in place to ensure artists continue to earn money long after the stop performing. About 24 hours ago, Nollywood actor Gideon Okeke posted a video on his Instagram page where he talked about royalties and residual income. Let's take a look at this. That's what the Igbos say. And that means, may what is due to me never elude me. May what is due to me never elude me. Nkema konam. If I told you why I walked away from a certain television show that I had worked on for 10 years, if I told you why I walked away from that show, free of charge, you'll begin to understand why they call me the upstart, the rebel, the knucklehead. And that's because I know the truth and I speak the truth. And like the Bible says, speak the truth and it will set you free. But man, me, I feel shackled and enslaved in this mother. If I shared all my career anecdotes with you, you would really understand that this industry is a beast. Why is it not right for the actor to receive royalties and residuals for his life's work? Is it because it is in the contract? Is there really a contract always? What really is the union or the guilt? What are they representing? I'll tell you a little story. So one time uh, on this certain television show that I had worked on for 10 years, I think it was my year four or year five, I had gone to Onyibo, I asked Onyibo, say, come, look at the facts here. Why is it global best practices everywhere in the world? Give uh, or make it possible that uh, the performers are entitled to some form of residual or royalty for the work that they have put in. Onyibo say, sorry, because the tenets of the law that supports or binds the business of filmmaking in this country doesn't support that you should receive royalties and to that i learned and i say filmmaking is a collaborative process filmmaking is a collaborative sport until it is time to share money the one that busts my head in that does my head in is the fact that at the tail end of the contract it says that the terms of co and conditions of binding this contract would evolve into, uh, you know, uh, 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 the, the exact expression says, for every media that has not been created in the now, for every media that has been created in the future, your image and likeness will be used in perpetuity throughout the universe and also employed in every media, every new media that has not been presently created. Man, me. This is slavery in my own country. This is a Af another African making me a slave in my own country. I've begun to really feel frustrated with this thing that I'm really gifted with, that I really love to do. Now, on the back of this video, we are asking, what is the hope of sustenance for the performer, especially long after retirement in Nollywood? Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 I'm going to bring in our guest shortly. I just wanted to hear your thoughts, um, Lamy. Yes. You know, I mean, it's really scary that you get to they get get to use your work even for the media platforms that are not even they've not they've not created. You get to use your work without you know. <laughs> it's scary. But let me hear your thoughts on this. One minute, and okay. I'll hear Jenny's thoughts. From my point of view, as a lawyer, I think that um, the filmmaker, everybody is out to make money. They are in business for the for the profit. So what I see that is a problem is that most. Um, most actors don't engage the services of legal oh, yes. practitioners. He was talking about contracts. 
So far, he didn't sign it under duress or there's no element of fraud. The court will protect the contract. Mm. So he op they open their eyes and they sign it. Mm. So you can't go around to now complain. What I think is lacking is the collective, um, collective bargaining power. Because this fight is fighting is valid. But can he go it alone? That is mm -hmm. a problem. And the law in Nigeria doesn't support it. I'll go into that as the time yeah. goes on. All right, so Jenny, quickly. Yeah, I agree with what Lamy said. Um, if there is anything I've noticed in Nigeria is a lot of people don't um, really look at their contracts. Um, aside, aside an actor coming out to say something like this, you've heard um, artists also complain about the fact that there were some things that were missed out in the contract. And people, if you're, if you're in the entertainment industry, you actually need to look for a lawyer who can actually help you look at these agreements so that there won't be any issue in the future. Like she said, the courts will definitely back that company. Yeah. Do, do our contracts even hold a lot of strength in Nigeria? Uh, well, you, you, know, you, know, you, know, you Of course it does. <laughs> well, let me bring in our guest. Demi Okolawo is an actor, creative entrepreneur, and the head of distribution at Silverbird Distribution. And Best Okodua is a filmmaker and social entrepreneur. Let me come to Demi first. Demi, thank you so much for joining us. You are always joining us when, when you're on set. <laughs> I know you're a busy man, but you took out time for us to have this conversation. So, dear me, you listened to the audio, I mean, the video um, that we played for um, the, your colleague, um, Gideon Okeke. So, let me just hear your initial thoughts. I mean, is Nollywood as an industry, the film industry, is it really, really vicious, as he has put it? Okay, so, um, it's, it's, it's a multi-layered issue. It does, it's not as simple as it sounds, um, and, and, I, and, I, and I hate to, I would hate to simplify or oversimplify it. Um, I've listened to my colleague, Gideon has some very, very valid points. Um, I've also gone around doing research about this same topic, because I mean, who doesn't want to have um, residual income on their work? for as long as that work is valid. Everybody wants to have that. Now, one of the things that he had mentioned was that um, the company he was working for, the production company he was working for said, and rightly said, that the labor laws of this country do not support having residual income. Mm -hmm. Neither do we have a guild that is fighting for such a cause. Um, however, I would also state here that even globally, not all actors get residual income, whether they're in movies or in TV series. As a matter of fact, this usually happens with TV series where actors have um, much stronger bargaining power because you're gonna shoot season one, two, three, four, and, and so on and so forth. And so actors have uh, continued work and uh, increased bargaining power. Um, there are some actors because of the size of their brand who in movies can negotiate residuals or back-end deals. And so it's, it's, it's a very complex situation. Of, and what I really just want to point out is this. It is valid for actors to ask for residual income on their content, on work that they have worked on. It's a valid, it's a valid um, request. What the actors should be trying to also do is to make sure that they're bringing value to that project. Again, if you're bringing value, at some point, I'm, I'm, I hope, and it's happened um, to several of my colleagues, where people ask them about it, have conversations with them about back-end deals and, and royalties. So that's that. Um, but the biggest thing here is that we do not have one voice as actors in this country that is fighting the cause of the actor. Well, um, I've seen, you know, all the generation of actors come and um, we've seen how they've lived. Oh, okay, we are losing um, DMS connection. But I think because we were watching a video clip, in fact, 
uh, on Tea Time here at Plus TV, where the actor, the president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, was saying that they were putting and this um, royalties is a strong to, um, um, topic that they are really, really working hard to ensure that they galvanize, you know, people to 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 start to give royalties to actors. But let me come to Best. Then I'll, I'll come to you um, to, to 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 ask your questions. But Best, if you can hear me, you are a film producer, right? You're a filmmaker. Is it even feasible? You know, I know Demi wears two hats. You're into distribution. But best, you're a filmmaker. Is it, is, it, is it a feasible thing for you to start giving all your actors on all the projects that they have, you know, royalties? Is it feasible? Um, flatly, no, it's not. You can have all your actors earn residuals. That doesn't even happen in Hollywood. Yeah, that we would um, agree to be the biggest... Um, Film industry in the world as it speaks. But then and again, um, I um, took from DME um, the one voice, yeah, which of course um, it's lacking. But then and again, I mean, even if you unify to fight a cause, there are questions that actually beg to be answered. And one of such prominent questions would be is it tenable? Really? Because um, even before, um, Hollywood never really had the residuals in their play until after 1947. And how did that happen? It had to take the intervention of the then president of the Screen Actors Guild, who was Ronald Reagan. Now, just follow this very, very quickly. Now, um, he was the one that pioneered the um, movement for residuals. And um, that didn't happen automatically because the studios had their consent also. Residuals is not just for actors. When they begin to give actors residuals, what about the directors? What about the writers? Mm. That was a concern that studios had, especially Universal Studios at the time. And then they dragged it up until somewhere around 1960 something. Now, this is the point that I want us to actually pay close attention to. The same Ronald Reagan at that time eventually became the governor of California for eight years. He very much understood what needs to be done and then policies were actually put in place. Governor of California, California being the headquarters of Hollywood. And this same man eventually went ahead to actually become um, the 40th um, president of the United States for another eight years. Now the policies actually moved on to the federal level. And then you have the Hollywood that almost everybody is envious of today. How is that even practical in our Nollywood right now? Because be it as it may, most of the people in the corridors of power, especially in the agencies, do not really understand the practice. Mm -hmm. Now, I am not saying they do not understand the arts. It's, it's different mm -hmm. from the practice itself. And now, if that understanding is not there, I mean, if that foundation is not firm, how will these policies that would enhance um, a system that would even make it tenable for actors to want to begin to request for... Um, residuals on a large scale. I say large scale because, um, like they Amiri rightly said, there are actors, even in Hollywood today, who, um, by the virtue of the size of their brand, still go around and, you know, hot spark end deals and become stakeholders in projects. That happens. But what I think that um, Gideon may have been calling out for was for it to be more of like a, um, a, 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 a perpetual practice. That is it happening on a large scale. That is going to take much more than actors unifying to intervene. That is going to take a lot more than people speaking of. That is going to take a lot more than people understanding what their rights is. It would go through the tunnels of what policies and system can actually make happen. Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what I think is lacking at the moment is a codified law regarding that. The copyright law in Nigeria does not make any provision for performance rights. All what we are talking about is performance rights. In the UK, I know for a fact that they make provisions for that. So right now in Nigeria, what happens is the contract, it's your personal contract. If you can negotiate for, to transfer your rights, you as a performer, to transfer it to the producer, then you bargain for a higher right. So they don't have to come back and forth for every time they need to use the, um, the production to you, but you can negotiate for something higher. So my question now is, do you even, is there any contract in place for every production? 
do you give them contracts at all? Or is it just recruit is people, much, put paying. them, <laughs> just give them money, and that's it? Because if, uh, if an actor gets a premium for, for, for acting in a particular production, going, looking back for realities might not even be in the question because he's already paid up front. So do you have anything, as I've said, do you have any provisions for contracts? Yeah. If you look very closely at um, Gideon's concerns, it really isn't the um, non-existence of contracts. Mm -hmm. It is actually the contents of the contract. Yeah. So, so I'm even asking um, that for Basically, the there are contracts, most definitely. There is hardly any production that actually sees the light of day without a contractual tie or probably a um, background. But um, what may actually, you know, be um, a place of concern right now would be the content of the contract itself. How flexible does this contract, you know, go in favor of the talents and mm -hmm. also in balance to the production company itself or the studio or probably the executive producer who is probably just one businessman that knows next to nothing about filmmaking. You know, there are lots of gray areas in these issues, and it actually narrows it down to some level of sensitivities that makes a lot of people just shy away from it. But really and truly, okay. it is one very big concern. I mean, everywhere you look at it, the actor would have their day, the studios will have their day, the marketers will have their day. And I would consistently say that um, the vacuum here, the divide here, is the non-existence of policies that favors all parties. If we have policies that actually, you know, unifies all these um, hexes, we probably would be another Hollywood. There won't be so much rancor as we have right now. Okay. All right, so we'll just quickly take a very, very short break. When we return, I want to ask Demi a question because, you know, he's wearing two hats. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.